in the recent poll that I had for you guys, a lot of you guys mentioned that you wanted to see more videos about DSA. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. I'm going to give you five tips that you can use to improve your problem solving skills and master DSA. Now, a lot of people will come to you and say, Ki DSA mein kya hai? just go and start solving problems, right? Just solve enough problems and you will eventually learn DSA, you'll master DSA. But let me tell you, that's not all that is there to it. You have more things. If you don't solve problems the right way, if you don't use the right techniques, then you're going to become stagnant. Your graph is going to look like this. You'll not see any improvement and you'll get stuck in one place getting frustrated. So how do you do DSA the right way? For that, I'm going to give you these five tips. Starting with tip number one, do not skip the basics. Now, I know what a lot of you guys do. You see that you want to do DSA and you come across a certain topic, let's say link list. You learn what is link list and then you jump straight to solving the problems, skipping the basics or the fundamentals completely. That is not how you should do it. Before you get started on problem solving, whatever topic you are on, let's say link list itself, learn everything theoretically, learn everything fundamentally. What is a link list actually? Why is there a useful link list? How does deletion in a link list work? How does insertion in a link list work? Understand everything theoretically, then move on to problem solving. Likewise, if you have dynamic programming, you'll know that there's a little bit of conceptual knowledge in dynamic programming as well. So just by learning the name of dynamic programming, do not go straight to problem solving. Okay, learn the basics, learn the fundamentals, because that is going to help you while doing the problem solving. Okay, especially in complex algorithms and complex data structures, you should not skip the basics, learn the theory, learn the fundamentals, then move to the problem solving part. Now, tip number two is don't spend too much time on problems, especially the easy ones. Okay, so I've made an entire video on that, on this thing basically. So if you're interested, you can watch that video as well. It will be in the description. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you're a beginner and if you're solving a problem, let's say you're solving a lead, lead code easy or easy medium problem, and you're spending a lot of time, you know, you're just like going through the problem, trying every possible test cases, you still are failing, you're not able to think of a solution. And that keeps on happening for more than one hour, more than half hour, then you're on the wrong track. Because most probably you're missing a concept that you don't know of. And if you don't know of it, you'll not be able to solve it. So it is okay to take help from the editorial. It is okay to take help from the solution. A lot of people say that don't look at the solution. Don't look at the editorial. That's not the way how it works. You can look at the solution. You can take a look at the editorial, but do not copy paste. Actually learn from it. Okay. So if you feel like you're not able to solve an easy problem within 30 minutes, drop it and try to take hints from the editorial, then try again. If you can solve a problem for more than 45 minutes for a medium problem, again, start taking hints, okay? For hard problems, you can take up to one hour or one and a half hour. That's the way I'll suggest to you. Half an hour for easy and around 45 minutes to one hour for medium and one and a half hour for hard. Don't take more than that. That is the maximum limit that I'm suggesting to you guys, okay? Now, the next tip that I have for you for learning DSA is about coding. So a lot of times what I feel is that, and you might be having this problem, people understand the solution. People understand key. Okay. This is what I have to do in the, this is what I have to do in the problem, but they're not able to do that in the code. So this is implementation issue, right? A lot of people come to me and they say, Ki, I'm able to get the solution, but I'm not able to code it out. Okay. So for this, you need to get into dry running. Okay. A lot of people do not dry run their code. Whenever you come across a problem, suppose you're not able to solve it. Suppose you want to take help from the solution, then you need to dry run it. Okay. So take a piece of pen and paper and whatever the code is line by line, understand what is happening on the piece of paper, write down the changes that are happening to the test case. So whatever data you have, see how the code is accessing the data. See how the code is changing the data with this. You'll have better command over code. So if you're taking some external code, you'll be able to understand it better. You'll be able to learn from it. Or if you're having a bug in your own code, sometimes it might happen that you have the code written for a problem and you feel like the code is correct. You feel like your solution is correct, but still it is giving wrong answer. So you can easily figure that bug out by just dry running your code. So have a habit of dry running your code, especially if you're new to programming, if you're new to problem solving, have the habit of dry running your code, either during bug finding, bug fixing, or when you're taking external solution to understand the like concept. Okay. So for that dry running is extremely important. Now coming to the fourth tip, 
this step is basically to give contest now i know a lot of you guys don't want to listen about computer programming and i'm not trying to sell you computer programming but it is essential that you give contest so if you like lead code if you like solving problems on lead code then even lead code has coding contest give coding contest there if you like geeks or geeks geeks or geeks also has coding contest give coding contest there if you like code forces code chef whatever it is i suggest giving contest okay if you ask my personal opinion i would say give contest on lead code for uh, technical interviews and give contest on code forces for clearing the online assessment because it brings you into that practice of solving problems under pressure under time you know where you have the time frame you can see that the time is going you can see that your rank list is there and you feel that pressure to perform and if you get that directly in the interview or directly in the coding round then it will impact your performance that pressure that anxiety will impact your performance but if you have faced that in the contest before then it will be like just solving a mock for you it will not be anything new to you so start giving contest and a lot of people say that okay after i solve 300 problems then i'll go to contest or i'll solve 500 problems then i'll go to contest no that's not the way soon as you start solving problems start giving contest give the contest whatever your performance is be satisfied with it know that you're learning know that you're improving and absolve the problems understand why you couldn't solve the problem and then make note of it so this brings me to the last point and that is note making now i know a lot of you guys will be saying that ds is just solving problems why do you need to make notes but the thing is a lot of times what happens suppose you on a problem you're not able to solve it because of a concept involved so that concept now is important to you because what if the same question comes to you or a similar question comes to you in the interview and you are not good with the concept and again you will not be able to solve the problem so whatever such concept is there because of which you were not able to solve the question make a note of it make a excel sheet or a google spreadsheet where you have a list of all the problems you did suppose you were not able to do the problem then write the reason why couldn't you do the problem and then if you took reference for solving it note down the reference and before the interviews you can just go through this sheet in the same sheet you can also you know like write down some tips or tricks that you have some notes for particular data structure some notes for particular algorithms and notion is also pretty good for this you can have like multiple tables multiple sheets on note notion so you can use either notion spreadsheet excel whatever you want but make notes make notes of the problems you solve make notes of the contest you give and the most important make notes of the concepts that you're learning the concepts that you're coming across okay so i usually like to do it the uh, old fashion way by just keeping a notebook so i had a notebook in my college where i used to learn all the algorithms i used to learn all the theoretical stuff i was learning but if you prefer you can make a notion or whatever it is so that's pretty much all the tips i had the five tips that i mentioned but i do have a bonus tip for you and the bonus tip for you may sound cliche but it is basically be consistent okay so i want you to be consistent and what i mean by that is solve at least one problem every day what happens sometimes you come across the weekend and you feel like you don't want to do any work on the weekend you just try to relax you party you have fun you watch series and you forget about dsa totally and after 2 3 days you lose that edge you lose that edge you know where your mind is in problem solving mode your mind is totally you know tackling all these problems when you're free whenever you have some time your mind is in that you lose that edge so even if you're doing half an hour of problem solving every day do it every day okay don't skip out a single day is what i will suggest to you at least try to solve one easy problem if you cannot if you don't want to do anything just solve a simple easy problem at least on that day okay but apart from that you can solve two to three problems every day easily i don't think that should be a issue so being consistent will definitely take you to the top so follow all the tips that i gave you implement them correctly and definitely you'll improve in dsa so if you have any other questions or doubts feel free to leave it in the comment if you have a suggestion for the next video also leave it in the comments and yeah let me see you in the next one